Hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm Ashley, and we are Tiny Shiny Home. Our family is building a desert homestead from the ground up, and today we are adding more solar panels on our Airstream cover roof to upgrade our massive DIY off-grid power system to almost 10,000 watts. Okay, let's talk about the specs of our current system, why we need more solar to get us through the summer, and how we're going to do it. So first off, if you want to see the incredibly detailed step-by-step -step guide to the existing installation, make sure you watch this video. We built a 28 kilowatt hour lithium battery bank ourselves for a fraction of the cost, designed a Victron-based 5,000 watt, 120 volt AC power system, and assembled a huge Iron Ridge ground mount housing 7,200 watts of used solar panels from Santan Solar. All the gear went into this Earthbag Solar Shed office, and then we built this beautiful Miracle Trust cover for a renovated vintage Airstream that we are currently living in while we build our house here on the property. We ran 30 amp AC shore power to the RV from the big system, parked the trailer, and have been loving having it protected from the elements ever since. 85 to 90% of the time, I would say that this system is far bigger than what we need. We're running a mini split for cooling and heating in the solar shed, lights, fans, computers, iPads, and the occasional Instant Pot. We use propane for hot water, cooking, and heating in the Airstream, so winter is actually the time of year that we use the least power, about 13 kilowatt hours a day for reference. But in the summer, that is where we're having some issues. Uh, yeah, desert summers are special. Before the monsoons come around in July and August, late spring and early summer always puts our system to the test. Without the rains to cool things off, we regularly have long, unbroken stretches of 100 degree heat, but also cloudy afternoons. That is a bad combination. The real culprit of our issues is this rooftop RV air conditioner. It uses 1500 watts when running and pretty much has two settings. On and off. With everything else we have running on a hot summer's day, we have about a three kilowatt hour constant draw. When the sun is out, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, during the heat of the summer, your panels are gonna be a little less effective, but we're still pulling five to 6,000 watts, which is plenty. But an important piece of information that we've learned after several seasons here is that during late spring and early summer, the sun actually rises and sets to the north. Very far north. So far that it doesn't even hit the panels in the morning or evening until it's much further overhead. Because we use about three times the amount of power and the sun is only hitting our solar panels during the peak time of the day, that's why we can't quite keep up. Here's some fast math. A typical day means we can be at 100% around noon and sustain that until about two or three when it starts to get cloudy. Then we're at just enough of a deficit to slowly drain the battery until five or six when we have to shut off the air in the Airstream. By then we're down to about 80% capacity. So if we tried to run that rooftop air conditioner 12 hours overnight, we'd empty our battery bank. Instead, we switch to an evaporative cooler in the Airstream to keep things semi-comfortable, wake up to about 50% battery, and have to wait to start the air conditioner in the Airstream around 7.30 or 8 when we're producing at least 1,500 watts of solar again. The problem is it's stupid hot at 6 a.m. as soon as that sun comes up. Between the northern sun, cloudy afternoons, and high water to draw all day long, we find ourselves behind just enough that we have to get the generator out and run it a few hours, which just really sucks. It's noisy and smelly, and it's just just a huge pain. Yeah, so how are we gonna fix it? Well, thankfully, when we built the original power system and this metal truss cover, we thought ahead. The original solar panel array system used strings of five 240 watt panels in series. In planning for the future, we actually set it up with two combiner boxes and two charge controllers with plenty of headroom. Each combiner box could take four strings, connecting them in parallel to create a 186 volt, 4800 watt, 32 amp array. We only bought 30 panels though, so one combiner box had four strings and the other only had two. So we've always had room in the system to add more solar. Ground mounting is super expensive out here. So when we built this cover for the Airstream, we went ahead and trenched a line from our concrete pad all the way down to the solar array. This would allow us to add two more strings of five panels or 2,500 more watts to the system without having to rewire anything. It's like we planned ahead. It is like we planned okay, ahead. Good job, Ben. As a bonus, this RV cover's gabled roof points to the east and west. So one string can go on one side, one can go on the other. And this should theoretically give us more power earlier in the day and later in the day, especially during that summer solstice when the sun is to the north. And with the additional 2,500 watts, that brings our total to nearly 10 
thousand watts. Whoa. As you can probably tell, we've been thinking about doing this project for a few years now. Yeah, and when we got all our solar gear for the goat barn container project, we actually just went ahead and bought a whole pallet of panels from Santan Solar and we picked up the Iron Ridge racking gear at the same time so we could be ready to do this when we had time. When was that? Now. Okay, great. We're actually in the middle of June, um, and so we're excited to get these panels on and hopefully keep this Airstream cooler during the summer. Good morning. Today is the day we're installing the extra solar panels on the roof of the Airstream cover. We've got our friend Dan here because not all of us like heights. And so uh, we're gonna get up there and see how we're gonna do this. It should be fun. So the trickiest part is always just making sure that we get these solar feet in the right spot <laughs> because once you kind of, you know, you punch all these holes in your roof, um, there's kind of no turning back. So uh, I think we have it centered here, but because it doesn't always exactly work out because you have all these ribs, right? So they're supposed to be about four feet apart. They're kind of pushed back and forth a little bit depending on where they hit. So uh, we're gonna bring over one of the actual 17 foot rails and um, just set it up here. And that way we can just get a visual, make sure that these are not spaced too far apart. It'll just, it should help us just, just triple check, just make sure <laughs> before we start screwing stuff down. stuck. When they sit out in the sun too long, the beetle tape gets stuck to the tape that's supposed to peel off. If you look closely at this S5 solar foot, you'll see there are four holes to screw into. The purlins on the Airstream cover go north to south, so we can easily hit two of the holes with what's already there. But to catch the other two, we're installing blocking where each foot goes. This is important because of the high winds that we get here. It's kind of fun watching you try to figure it out though. Is that where it needs to go? Do you want me to get you paint to touch that part up? Nope. All right, so it's a little windy. I'll try to get through this quickly. Uh, basically, you've got this S5 solar foot that gets screwed down. You saw us blocking it all. Then this L foot goes on and uh, you torque this down, this nut down to hold this in place and it will slide a little bit to, to adjust. And then you take the bonding nut that slides into the rail and locks in as it turns. And you also torque this to a proper spec and then we're just gonna bring the panels in, lay them on and do the UFOs on top to hold them down in place. So the rails are all in place, ready to go. The other tricky part of this project is trying to figure out how to get these panels up here because we didn't want to rent like a scissor lift or something like that. Um, so we're trying to figure out how to get them up on this side. This is really light rope.
With the panels finished on the east side of the roof, it was time to repeat the process on the west side. Good morning. We're back out. Um, last night we did a little bit of work on the wiring. We didn't record it all. It was really hot. It was late in the day. We were just trying to get stuff done. So what we're doing here is we're installing a junction box on this. We have our eight gauge wire that's running out of here and actually we pulled it. It goes all the way down to the solar panel where we have those extra spots open on the combiner box. We're gonna make up these connections later, but now we need to go back up on the roof and focus on getting all the PV and the ground wires pulled down into the top of this box. So we're up here, we've connected these panels in series, which basically means you take the positive of the first one to the negative of the next one, all the way down the line, but that means that while you have your positive out here at the end, it means the negative you left at the beginning still needs to come all the way back down to that combiner box, right? So what we're doing is we're going to make up those wires, get them pulled. I've already drilled some holes here. We're going to pull them down through a waterproof enclosure. And so the first wire is 45 feet. I got to make a connection on the end, bring it down, pull it through the ceiling. We got four wires we need to make up, uh, positive and negative for this array and positive and negative for this array. After pulling the four 10 gauge PV wires and two four gauge copper grounding wires through the waterproof enclosures, we needed to tie them up and get them into the junction box. Did we do it? Everything except the ground and hooking it up down there. Okay, let's take a look at what we did here. We have both of our positive and negative wires coming from each array on either side of this gabled roof. They're coming down this service entrance into this junction box. Then we added this DC isolator, ran the positive and negative in because it has two inputs, and then we switched to eight gauge to go out and go down in the conduit all the way underground to the existing open spots over there at the solar panel array. We switched to eight gauge because it's a 100 plus foot run and we added this isolator so we could shut off these panels here at the Airstream cover if we ever needed to. And finally, those two four gauge copper wires that were connected to the Iron Ridge ground mount come down in here, then they come out this flexible tube and go down to a ground rod that we have buried somewhere back over here. Okay, I still have that main switch flipped off over there, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into this combiner box. This one is also shut off so that 
can't get any power going into our main system. But we're gonna plug this in and then go turn that switch on, double check that all our voltage and everything is good, and then hopefully we'll just connect it up and it'll work. Okay, can I flip it on? You wanna flip it on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, is that on over there? Go to that one first. So if you look here, that charge controller is zero because we have it completely yeah. turned off. So. so nothing's being sent into the shed. Right. So this should allow, it should basically match this. So we should get close to 6,000 watts. Ready? Maybe. We'll see. Ready? Yeah. Ah! What if I scared you? I'm not scared you. 3,000? Also, we're at 98 percent. Oh, oh, there you go, 6,000 watts. Yeah, oh I didn't know God. if it would go full blast, but 62. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. That's exciting. It's a lot of power, babe. So, how did all of this work out? Pretty much exactly how we had planned. The panels on the roof facing east and west really boosted our production early in the morning and late in the day, which allowed us to keep the air conditioner on longer and charge back up faster. Not only that. But we went from producing about 30 kilowatt hours a day to 40 kilowatt hours a day and that noisy smelly generator went back in the garage. A plot twist that we did not see coming is our air conditioner on our Airstream just died. All that beautiful solar power and we can't even use it. Or maybe we could. Coming up we're installing a mini split in our tiny shiny home. We will see you then.